Hi everyone, I'm Sabine, and welcome to my channel where I make art videos. I've been working in my sketchbooks a lot lately, so I thought today we would talk about how to choose a sketchbook that's right for you, and some things you might want to consider before buying one. I've been focusing a lot on my sketchbooks lately due to my sketchbook challenge, and if you haven't watched those videos, I'll put a link in the cards for you. Anyway, it got me thinking that I should do a video about how to choose a sketchbook, something that works for you and some things you might want to consider before getting one. That said, sketchbooks are a very personal thing. A sketchbook that one person loves, another person might hate. So when I talk about my own preferences, you might want to take it with a grain of salt because everybody's different, and what works for you might not be my favorite thing in the world. This video is focusing a little bit more on the beginner side of things, but I'm still hoping that we can have a thoughtful conversation around what kind of sketchbooks people like to use and what your preferences are. There are a number of things to consider before buying a sketchbook. Size, style, the binding. Do you want to draw on both sides of the pages? And what kind of mediums do you want to use inside? Especially considering wet versus dry. And of course, there's also the price to consider. Let's start there. Sketchbooks range considerably in price. You can get some that are quite expensive, and you can also get some that are really cheap. If you're worried about quality, then just look to make sure that the paper is archival safe. Other than that, pretty much anything goes, and you can choose what you want. In fact, if you're new to sketchbooks, or you're one of those people who has trouble filling them, you might want to get a cheap one. I think a lot of people talk about how they don't want to mess up a nice, beautiful, pristine sketchbook, which is going to happen. You're going to have bad drawings, and you might even screw up some of the pages if you're experimenting with media you don't normally use. Buying a cheaper sketchbook should alleviate some of that anxiety because, well, you didn't pay that much money for it anyway, so if you mess it up, it doesn't really matter so much. I could see if you spent a lot of money on something and you screwed it up, it might be a little more upsetting. Plus, if you're new to sketchbooks, then you might not really know what you want. It's a lot better to buy smaller, cheaper sketchbooks and try out a bunch of different things before investing a ton of money into something that you might not even like. Honestly, I don't even have recommendations for expensive brands of sketchbooks because I don't really use them. I like to use the store brands, like Curry's, for example. The quality is just as good as a brand name, and it's a fraction of the price, so why pay more? I like my cheap sketchbooks. As far as size and shape go, some people like larger sketchbooks because they really like to spread out their work. They like to have lots of space to draw in. And some people like smaller sketchbooks because they're portable. It's easy to throw them in a bag and take them with you. I like the smaller sketchbooks myself. It's easier to fill up a page and just keep moving forward. Consider how big you tend to draw, and if you tend to use most of the paper, or if your drawings are really tight. Choose something that's going to be a size that will be comfortable for you to draw in. Paper quality is the next big thing we'll talk about. And with this one, the number one question is, do you want to use wet or dry media in your sketchbook? If you want to paint in your sketchbook, then you need a paper that can handle being wet. Most paper is not made to handle water. It'll actually start to disintegrate if you try and paint on it, especially if you try to do a wash. You don't want a sketchbook that's going to fall apart on you, so if you're going to be painting in it, consider getting a mixed media or a watercolor sketchbook. That paper is meant to hold water, so it won't give you any problems if you paint in it. If you're concerned about buckling in your sketchbook, which is when the paper kind of contorts from water use, then getting a heavier weight is going to be much better. In fact, I'd recommend getting the heaviest weight you can if you're going to be painting in your sketchbook, because I hate buckling. <laughs> I'll show you an example. You can see how the pages are kind of warped. So I've been painting in it a little bit, and it has been buckling on me. I've tried flattening it, but that doesn't always work. If buckling doesn't bother you, and in fact some people kind of like that buckled look, it kind of looks like you've really used your sketchbook and put it through a lot, 
then it doesn't really matter. You can get the thinner paper as long as it's a kind of paper that can hold water. I'd love to get a nice quality watercolor sketchbook because I do painting a lot, especially watercolor, and I tend to use a lot of water when I paint. But you know, the sketchbooks are kind of expensive, and as I've mentioned, I don't really like putting a lot of money into them. What I have considered is making my own watercolor sketchbook. If that's something you'd like to see me make, then let me know in the comments and maybe we'll get a do-it-yourself watercolor sketchbook video. So we've been talking about paperweight, and I think heavier is better for wet media, but if you're using dry media, I think it's really kind of up to you. A thinner paper is going to show through, so if you like drawing on both sides of the paper, then a heavier weight is probably something you want to invest in. If you only plan on drawing on one side of the paper, then maybe a thinner paper is better for you. Since we're talking about dry media, the other thing you want to consider with your paper is its tooth. That's how rough the paper is. And if you're using something like pencil or pastel or charcoal, then you want a paper that has a bit of a tooth to it. Versus if you're using pens or markers, you might want a smoother paper to work on. And the last thing we're going to talk about is the binding. Hardcover versus softcover. Personally, I like hardcover. I think they're more durable. I kind of throw mine in bags and, you know, I, I'm a little brutal towards my sketchbooks, so I like them to hold up. Softcovers tend to get damaged around me. Plus, there's the added bonus that you have a hard surface to work on. So if you're kind of like me and you like to draw on the couch, then it's really easy to grab a hardcover sketchbook and you have that surface already with you. Of course, if you like soft cover, then it's not the end of the world. You can always use a clipboard or another hard surface to travel with you. But the biggest controversy in sketchbooks seems to be spiral bound versus book bound. And there's people in both camps. I've got two sketchbooks with me right here. The red one is a hardcover book bound, and the other one, as you can see, has a spiral binding. The benefits to a spiral bound book is that it's easy to take out the pages, so if that's something you want to be able to do with the sketchbook, it's much easier with the spiral bound. And some people just like the format, they like being able to flip the page over. And if you draw on one side of the page, or you're not really concerned about drawing in spreads, then this could work really well for you. I'll just show you really quickly. If you have a spiral bound book, one of the problems with it is that you have this gutter down the middle. So if you like to draw on both sides of the page and you kind of want it to look cohesive or you draw on a spread, then that's usually a bit of a problem. Compared to a book bound book, where you can draw across the whole spread and there's nothing in the middle, occasionally you get a little string where the binding is, but that's not on every page. So it's really a lot better if you like using both sides of the page and you want to draw, maybe do some spreads. In case it isn't obvious, I hate spiral bound books. And the main reason that I hate them is actually pretty silly. It's because when you try to store them, they just don't sit well next to each other. As you can see, the spiral binding kind of sticks out a little bit past the paper of the book, so when you have a whole bunch of them next to each other, they just don't sit well together and it drives me crazy. <laughs> Whereas the perfect bound and hardcover books just all sit flat next to each other and they look great on the shelf, it's just so much easier to store them. Yes, I have a lot of sketchbooks and that's one of my kind of pet peeves about spiral binding. One of the most common concerns though with a spiral bound sketchbook is transfer. Now transfer is when you have a medium that usually smudges something like pencil or charcoal and it transfers from the page you drew on to the page opposite. Let me show you some examples. This is a really old sketchbook of mine and this drawing was done in pencil. Now I used a wide range of leads from very hard to very soft and you can see here where the transfer is. This is not only the very dark areas where I probably put a lot of pencil down, but it's also where the softer pencils were. And over time, this has kind of gotten messier and messier. So that's what transfer looks like. A lot of people think spiral bound books are worse for transfer because the pages move against each other more. Here, let me show you. Here's the book bound book and you can see it, it does move a little bit, right? The pages do move a little bit against one another. And here's the spiral bound book, and you can see the pages 
can move a lot more against one another. Transfer can happen in any kind of sketchbook, but especially if you like to use mediums that transfer a lot, or you're into spiral bound books, or both, do future you a favor and get yourself a can of fixative. Just spray this on the pages when you're done and it will prevent transfer. This one's pretty good. It's uh, Windsor Newton and it's a matte finish, so after I've sprayed my pages, I can't even see it. But it works pretty well. Do not use hairspray. It will yellow your pages because it's not archival quality, whereas fixative is. So now that we've talked about all these different things for you to consider, my last tip is actually don't overthink it. Sketchbooks are supposed to get messy. You will have bad drawings in them, you'll probably ruin some pages, and that's okay. Whatever challenges that sketchbook throws at you, it's your job to finish it. And then you get to start all over again with a brand new one. If you do start a sketchbook and you find you're really struggling with it, try using different media on it. You might find that the paper in it is better for stuff you don't normally use and maybe not as good for the things that are your favorite tools. Either way, your sketchbook is for filling, it's for experimenting, it's for learning, so no matter what you do, just work on filling it and don't be afraid to make a mess. Tell me what your favorite sketchbook is. I want to know. Let me know in the comments below. Feel free to gush about your favorite brands or tell me about the ones you didn't like. And if there's something important that you think I've missed, then let's talk about that too. Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe for more awesome art videos coming at you every Friday. If you like this video, then let me know by hitting the like button. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week.